I just left the meeting with the pastor and she gave me a couple of tools to help me become a better leader. And now I think it's time for me to pass them on to you. Tools of servanthood, congratulations. What, is this some kind of joke? She wants me to reconcile with my ex-wife. Hello, it's me, I'm Tiffany. Well, Pastor McKnight, we think you kind of need to put yourself out there again. Well, 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 if it is, isn't Sister Winpeg. <laughs> An elder outranks the head deacon. Gotta go. What? I'm getting married and we want you to do the honors. Honey, it's what I don't see that's bothering me. Bother me a lot. It's what I don't see that's bothering me. Bother me a lot. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? Elena, in every one of these pictures, you are either looking at him adoringly, or here you've got your arm around him, you're hugging him, here you're holding his hand. Uh, well, yeah, I love him, and we're about to get married. Here's my question. Is he about to get married? Okay, what kind of a question is that? It's a real one, when in every single one, every single one of these pictures, he's got his nose in his iPhone. It's like you don't even exist. Oh, well, that's just how he is. He's just not that affectionate. It'll get better after the wedding. Sweetie pie, I love you to pieces, but that's a lie from the pit. It's now when your love is to be new and fresh and exciting. It is. Evidently not for him. He ought to have his hands all over you, mm, in the holy sense. I mean, he ought to be hugging you and holding your hand and giving you smooches. Well, like I said, he's just not affectionate. But you are. You run around here all the time hugging anything that'll hold still. And I know for a fact that your daddy, Deacon Grumpy Pants, loves your mama and can't keep his hands off of her. Pastor, what does my mom and dad have to do with this? Everything, because that's the environment in which you were raised. And for you to go from that environment into an environment utterly devoid, devoid of any form of affection, honey, that'll destroy you. Come on, Pastor, destroy me. Do you love this man? Of course I do. All right, then I want you to picture this. I want you to picture a lifetime of living in the same home with a man you love who doesn't want to touch you, doesn't want to hug you, doesn't want to hold you, hold your hand, may not even want to get under the sheets with you. Honey, that's not a marriage. That's having a roommate. And I'm sorry, but I don't marry roommates. And I certainly don't marry people that are unequally yoked. You look at these pictures, you two are unequally yoked. Pastor, this is ridiculous, and I'm going to talk to my dad. If you won't marry us, then we'll find somebody who will. Oh, Elena, honey. And this day started out so good. Oh, gosh. Gina, when Deacon Hall comes in this afternoon, will you have him stop by and see me? No, she's not happy. Thanks. The 
this is so exciting. Mama Scott told me the good news. Alana's getting married. Yahoo! We're gonna talk to Mary, but I think I'm gonna offer to do the flowers and Mama Scott wants to do the food. And according to her, this is the first wedding in the church in years. You have got to be beside yourself. <clears throat> Don't tell me you've already messed things up before they even got started. <clears throat> Give me the details, all of them. Look, for the sake of my nervous system, I'm gonna summarize air so briefly. Alana comes in, brings in a bunch of pictures of her and her fiance. I look at him, looks to me like he doesn't even know she exists. Every single picture I looked at had his face in his iPhone, every one of them. I'm afraid to ask, but what did you say? Said I wasn't gonna marry him. Uh-uh, I said, look, looks to me from looking at these things that you two are never gonna be anything except roommates, and I don't marry roommates. Does Deacon Hall know? Well, if there weren't any bullet holes in the front door when he came in, probably not, yet. So when he does find out, are you going back into retirement? Are you going to find a whole nother church to pastor? You know, periodically. I mean, just every once in a while. I'd like a little sympathy from you. It won't be today. Now, to repeat one of your favorite sayings, the bluebird of happiness just flew over the party with a bad case of upset stomach, and hello, Madam Bluebird. Now you're getting on my noise. <laughs> Look, seriously, the job of a shepherd is to protect the flock. I am a shepherd, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that one day I will stand before the head shepherd, and I don't want him pointing his finger at me and saying, young lady, you knew they were unevenly yoked, you knew the marriage wasn't going to last, and you knew a great deal of pain was going to come out of it. But you decided to marry him anyway. Why? Because you didn't want to upset your deacon and you wanted to protect your own job. Well, when you put it that way, I can see your point. So when are you going to have to face Deacon Hall? It was supposed to be yesterday, but he was a no-show. So my guess is today is D-Day. As a matter of fact, well, I guess I better get going and face this thing head on. Oh. What's all this? Now, you know I've been around the block more than once. And when it comes to taking care of business, certain things I understand. And dressing appropriately is always important. And I face this head on, huh? I sure am. And as I do it, I'm going to look dignified. They look sophisticated. <laughs> Gotta face this head on, huh? Head on. Take care of this for me while I'm gone. <laughs> Coward. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> Lock up when you leave. Lord, thank you for the food, for the nourishment of my body. And thank you. Thank you for these few precious moments of peace and quiet. Amen. Dad, she's in here. You know what? I knew we should have fired you the minute you walked through the door. Now you listen to me and you listen to Lord! Could we please revisit the issue of peace and quiet? Amen. May I remind you that our family has been part of this church as far back as I can. And Lord, can you please touch the hearts of those who so carelessly trample all over my peace and quiet? Amen. No, no what? Listen, what I'm telling you is that you, Lord. Seriously. You know what? 
The next prayer out of my mouth is going to be, Lord, where do we hide your body? (laughs) Now that was a good one. That was a good one. (laughs) All righty now. Fair enough. We'll just call this a draw. No, we won't because I'm not finished yet. Of course you're not. Go ahead, Daddy. Go ahead and tell her how she ruined the most important moment of my life. Do you know how angry this makes me? My little girl has finally found the right man to marry. Somebody that my parents would approve of. And not only that, be proud to call him their son-in-law. And you just ruined it. So I'm trying to tell you. Lamar. What? Have you seen the pictures that Elena has of the two of them on her phone? Of course I have. Why? What did you think when you looked at them? I thought they were two people in love about to get married. Take another look. He doesn't have to do that. He's already seen how happy we are. For the sake of your daughter's future, please, I'm asking, take another look. Elena, can I see the pictures again, please? Uh, This is ridiculous. What, I see how happy she is? And what do you see in him? I told her he's just not affectionate. And I told her that she deserves a man that will love her just as much as her daddy loves her mama, that... I can't keep my hands off of you kind of love. That's what she deserves. I can't keep my hands off you. What in the world are you talking about? I know exactly what I'm talking about. You always have your hands on Mary. You're either rubbing her arm or you're playing with her hair, and I've seen you pinch her a few more times than I care to recall. Look, that woman is my life, and I want her to know it. Then don't you want your daughter to be married to a man who feels the exact same way about her? Of course I do. Then look again. Uh, You know, well, it it does kind of look like he doesn't even know you're in the room. Elena, baby, maybe we should talk. Talk about what, Father? The fact that you are listening to her over your own daughter? Elena, that's not fair, honey. I want the same thing that every father wants, and that's for their child to be happy. You're right, Dad. Elena, don't walk away. Don't... Lamar, I have dealt with a lot of people in a lot of situations over the years, and I'm telling you, Something is profoundly wrong in those photos and something that goes way, way, way beyond. He just not the affectionate type. Like what? Do you know anybody that knows him? Yeah, I do know a couple of people he works with. Then as your friend, your sister in Christ, and somebody that wants to see Elena just as happy as you and Mary... I'm asking you, please check things out. I'm afraid when it's all said and done, you're going to have found things that you're not going to be very happy about. You know, you just might be right. You know what? Do you know how many times I've defended you when you're so close to getting fired? Do you know how many times I've told him that you were right and he was wrong when it came to issues of this church? And this is how you repay me? Well, thanks for nothing. Honey, honey, don't walk. (sighs) You know what? It pains me to say that you might be right, but I'm going to do some checking. Elena! Hallelujah, hallelujah, you were right. Jesus and his great white horse done showed up, done showed up. 
<laughs> well, if he showed up in the sanctuary, I hope he had the good decency to leave his horse out in the parking lot. Do you want this contract to pay it off or not? And I hope your answer is yes, because Mary showed up here this morning and she said Deacon Hall is still on the warpath. That's a good thing. Means he's not dead. No, you're about right about that. Anyway, look, look. I talked to Jada. And she said we'd be getting $30,000 when her mama passes. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Jesus done rode in on his great white horse. Hey! That does it. <laughs> that does it. I am officially locking up the communion wine. Two things. First, I don't think Jesus needs a horse to get into town. Whatever. What you need to do is get Deacon Hall on the phone and let him know what's going on. And second, I have no intention whatsoever of discussing this with anybody, especially Deacon Hall. What is wrong with you? This could be a good thing. Derek, the woman isn't even dead yet. Who knows? God may want to heal her. Mm -hmm. You afraid Deacon Hall might pray her dead? Well, now, now that's a th Look, all I know is Gina's mama is worth way more than money. And I just don't believe somebody got to die in order for us to pay that bill. Well, you're right about that, but tell me something. Why is Deacon Hall so fired up about selling this building? <laughs> He's just afraid. Afraid of what? Change! Now, I know he and I aren't exactly alike. You think? But the one thing we do have in common is the fact that neither one of us is a young chicken anymore. Watch your mouth. Which means that I, too, understand that change can be difficult. I think he's just afraid. And you add kids to the mix, he about to lose his ever-loving mind. I don't know. He was so good with those kids when they made cookies in the fellowship hall, remember? <laughs> Kid, that was grandpa stuff. You know, you play with them a little bit and you send them on home. No, we're talking about having kids around here all the time. That's change. Big change. Hmm. I see your point. Well, you're going to have to deal with him until 1159. Derek, God is going to come through. Yes, it might be a squeaker. It might be that close to midnight, but he's going to be faithful. Just watch. Yeah. Pastor, can we come in? Sure. Oh, it looks like you're about to go somewhere. Yeah. Maddie and I are going to go have lunch and then do some, do some shopping and I don't know. Looks like y'all need to do some talking. Come on, Dad. It's our, we can, I don't want to be no, here anyway. No, no, no. We need, we need to... You got something stuck in your throat? Apologize. Apologize? What for? Well, Pastor, we were pretty tough on you yesterday. Oh, for Pete's sakes. That's how you and I dance, you know? But baby girl here, now she broke my heart. I'm so sorry, Pastor. I hope you can understand. I had so many emotions running through me, and they were all running pretty hot. And I can understand that. I was about to embark on the best years of my life, and you kind of slammed the door in my face. I'm so sorry. You know, and that kind of thing messes with a father's heart. I bet it does. And it didn't work any wonders for my heart either. I love that girl. And I'm kind of getting right fond of you too. Oh, please. Look, I did what you asked, what you suggested. I, uh, I talked to some of his co-workers, mm -hmm. and what you said was pretty on track. 
they told me that uh, he was a pretty consistent womanizer. Do you want to pick him? <laughs> and I don't mean to add insult to injury, but I had Officer Lansky do some investigating, and I'm sorry, sweetie, but he's got at least two sexual harassment charges pending. What? Oh, I'm That's so weird. sorry. I don't understand. I didn't do anything wrong, so why do I feel like dirt? Was he going to just use me and throw me away? You know, that man is, he has gotten on my last nerve. I'm going to deal with him. Deke, Deke. He hurt my baby. I know he did. But let the Lord deal with it. He can do better than either one of us can. Let me tell you how you ought to feel. You ought to feel like that work of art that God made you to be. Remember he said you are fearfully mm. and wonderfully made? Yes. Oh, honey, you are so lovely. You are so smart. You've got this fabulous sense of humor. Mm. You're kind, tender-hearted. Any man in his right mind would consider you, next to Jesus, the best possible gift God could give a man. Now, she's really telling the truth now, unlike some of the other times. Really? Really? Now? I don't suppose there's any chance you could go get some coffee and let the girls talk? What? Um... Uh, yeah, I guess so. Now here's the truth. You're gonna hurt for a while. But if you need to talk, you need to cry, you just call me day or night and I will be there and we'll talk. We'll even cry together if we need to. I'm so embarrassed, I was so ugly to you. When was that? <laughs> you know. No, don't think I really recall. But what I do recall is a wonderful portion of scripture that I read this morning. I think it'll bless you. Here. See, I was going to read it several more times today. I just want you to put yourself in this scripture. Now it's Psalm 91. Just going to read a couple verses. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that place of His presence, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That shadow is that place of protection. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He's my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Now listen to this. Surely, and I mean surely, 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 he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. And that's just exactly what God did for you. Remember when I told you that to live with somebody who you loved and they never wanted to have affection with you, that it would destroy you? Remember. Well, what God did is he snatched you out of that fowler snare. He snatched you away from that deadly pestilence. And then finally, let's see, these next... Ah, oh, I love this. Remember now, I breed chickens and ducks and geese, so I understand Mama. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. When that Mama bird spreads her wings and those little chicks come underneath, Satan himself is not going to be able to harm them because Mama will fight to the death to protect them. And that's how God feels about you. He's going to fight and do whatever it takes to protect you, his baby girl. And then finally, the last line, his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. His faithfulness. So, his faithfulness is what's protected me and kept me from marrying this man. Absolutely. And his faithfulness will 
always protect you. You are his baby girl. All you have to do is stay in his presence and trust him. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. I do feel better already. Well, I'm going to make you feel even better yet because I guarantee you beyond a shadow of a doubt that that perfect husband for you, mm, God knows exactly where he is and he's protecting him, just waiting for you. All you have to do is be faithful to stay in his presence and just trust him. Yes, sweetie. I love you to pieces. Thank you so much. All right, since Gina's mama isn't dying, where is Jesus and this big white horse you've been talking about? Because it's 1159 with one second to before midnight. Well, good afternoon to you too. Isn't it such a lovely day? <laughs> Do you see my armpits? Mm, not something I ordinarily look at, so no. Well, take a good look at them because I'm going to need a mop under there. No, well, I'm not looking. And you can take it to the bank. I'm not going to go get any mop. So why don't you just let us know what's got you all glistened up? <coughs> this here, that's what. Another letter from the contractors. Certified. And they're saying if we don't pay up by day after tomorrow, they're going to put a lien on the property. I don't see a problem with that. Just means old Deke won't have such an easy time selling the place. Mm-hmm. So you gonna give it to him this time? Let me see it. Well, you know, I think the best thing to do is um, just file it. You know this man knows where you live. What? You think he's gonna come get me in the middle of the night? All I know is you're going to be in trouble and he's going to be very upset. And I hope that your will is up to date. 